All right, we're going to start by prepping the cement block so we can turn off all the other items in the scene except for the cement block. And I just got to set this to Maya. Okay. We're going to turn polyframe on. So let's go over here and turn polyframe on. And if I hit tab, you'll see that the polyframe looks like this. Okay. Which makes perfect sense because what happens is if you multiple res something, it will collapse in on itself. And you can use multiple res for sculpting, but you can't use subdivide for sculpting. So our only alternative here is to put an edge loop in. All right, so let's do this. Let's go into modifiers. Let's add a multi-resolution and let's hit subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. Okay, now what's gonna happen is we're gonna get so many extra edge loops in this area that it's going to be counterproductive. Okay. If I want to damage the outside edge, it's going to look kind of funny sometimes when it goes in. I'm going to show you a way to counteract that, but just know that if you don't follow these steps perfectly um, when you're sculpting, you're going to get a bunch of kind of pinched geometry. Okay. Okay, we're going to go with five, and then I'm going to lower it down to four. Okay, then I'm going to go in and take this wire mesh off and we're going to damage the block. We're going to do this in sculpt mode. And we're going to use the F draw. All right. I'm going to use subtract here, strength, but I'm going to keep auto smooth like pretty far up there. Okay, that way when I subtract in, it will not pinch the geometry. Now first I have to make bigger, huger holes. That's going to be a hole in the cement right there. And the minute you see something pinching, hold shift, and this will auto smooth it. So I'm using F brush here with the following settings. Good. So lots of damage on this thing. Got hit by a bus or something. Okay, some significant pinching going on there. Okay, how could I have prevented that? Well, let me undo a couple times. What I could have done is go here to the multi res feature and go preview or sculpt down to four or three and then did that. Okay, and then I can bring it back up. So that's a good way to prevent it from getting pinched. You don't want that pinching going on because if you get that pinching, the normal map looks really bad in that area. Now I'm just kind of roughening up these just a little bit. So your damage is going to look different from my damage. You don't have to copy mine at all. This is just to get you antiquated with the idea of how to make something very high res but still have it in game. and it is a pretty good workflow as far as it takes a lot of
time and energy. So that's why I chose just to do a small cube rather than an entire uh, character or anything like that for the first time. Like that, that looks cool. Usually, if this stuff is on the ground, it kind of crumbles on the ground. So, I'm just gonna kind of go like this along the base every once in a while. Whenever cement touches dirt, cement like uh, will absorb the moisture in it and kind of rot away. Sometimes. It all depends. I used to work with cement a lot. Okay, so there we go. Um, I got the roughed out general idea. The bigger holes. Okay, now I'm just going to start adding a little bit. And I'm just going to add bigger parts, pieces. Now this is not detail, this is just form. So I'm going to add some form in that area. Like that. You shouldn't go really high poly all at once. You got to go in stages. And I like this, but I want to maybe a little patch right here. Maybe that patch is a little deeper so I can stick some stuff in there. And I'll just add a couple in here. Alright, now that I have this, um, I can go back up to sculpt maybe level 6. So I'm going to hit subdivide. But when I do this, I'm going to go to F draw, go down, and I'm going to make a texture. So over here, I can make a texture by just simply going over to the texture tab and going new, and it will generate clouds. Okay. And I'm going to name this cloud brush. Cloud is just a form of noise. There's lots of different variations of noise, but cloud allows you to create a lot of different noises at all with the one noise and that's just done by going down to colors you can do it here you can do it uh, via the size okay so over here I do have now a cloud brush and it doesn't show up real time what I'm gonna go down is stroke and go to anchored I'm gonna turn off auto smooth and I'm gonna turn up strength and I'm just going to kind of click and drag and if this stuff touches the outside edges that's good it'll help break it up but you don't want it to crawl. Remember the surface of cement is usually smooth but the stuff on the inside is the damage part. Okay, then I'll turn the strength way up and kind of go like this, closer to the edge. I found this works a lot better than trying to brush it on.
And yes, this is very tedious, but it's very fun. So this exercise, students will love, no doubt about it. Take your time. If you need reference, you know, you could look up damaged cement. Another thing I like about doing it this way is I have a lot of undos. Sometimes if I'm using a brush, I'll hog down on it and then get everything done, but only have one undo. And then I'd have to undo everything just to fix one little thing. So... pop this along the edges every once in a while. There we go. And then I'm going to subtract every once in a while. Like I'll just put a spot there, spot there. Maybe I'll rough up this entire bottom edge. few more here. And you want to back away from it every once in a while just to see how you're doing. Alright, now that we've got this far, let's go into the next video.